don't want what we know out there. How a person can go from really almost nothing to becoming a millionaire by owning rental property. He would always buy these flip houses and I just remember thinking, this guy is crazy. Why would he buy that house? In the past decade, there's been a huge surge in the peer-to-peer short-term rental market. Become an insider. So you have to know the rules before you get the game. Every second counts. So make every second count. Welcome to the Real Estate Jam. Whether you're just beginning or the best of the best, we're glad you're here. We will share successes, failures, and strategies for the action-taking real estate investor. And now to your hosts, JD, Annabelle, and Melissa. All right. Well, it's another exciting episode here. Um, one of our favorites when we get to have a guest. Uh, today we have our friend Luke. He is really, we've known him as long as we have known each other. Um, we met at a mastermind in Arizona. Um, and he is a marketing extraordinaire, a real estate investor, an all around great dad. So without any further ado, uh, Luke, can you introduce yourself a little bit? Sure. Thanks, Annabelle. Appreciate it. So excited to be on the show and, and so excited for you guys in launching this and, and all that you guys got going on. Um, like Annabelle said, we've, we've known each other, man, since, since the mastermind in Arizona. Um, so for a little bit now. And uh, uh, I'm based out of Montana and we went to the mastermind in Arizona, just kind of all came together um, from all parts of the country. And that was, that was a good time, wasn't it? We had a good time. Yes. So, yeah, so I've got, like you said, I, I got some, I do real estate investing. Um, I'm involved in a bunch of other marketing or I've in a bunch of other companies, one of them being marketing. Um, and uh, I just like, I, I just like to find problems and solve them, I guess. <laughs> That's a good thing. That's right. And we've definitely got similar passions. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. You guys know all about that. Yeah. You guys are solving problems literally all over the country. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are. So, uh, Luke, I, I, love think, it. I, I think I'd, I'd like to get your perspective. We've done a, a couple of different podcasts with a couple of different guests, uh, and, and a lot of them from the uh, like leaders of these um, investment uh, and real estate mm -hmm. mentorship groups. Uh, mm -hmm. And I know that, that you're fulfilling one of those roles now, but uh, that was kind of a more recent uh, endeavor for you. And I'm wondering more about your perspective on masterminds from a member standpoint, um, mm. you know, and, and I, as far as I know, you're, you're not um, being paid as a coach or a mentor. And so uh, I wanted to make sure that we had somebody on here who could speak on masterminds that, that sure. don't necessarily have a monetary benefit to them, right? Because a lot of the sure. people you talk to do, sure. Uh, and I still right. value their opinion, but sometimes I think it's nice to see both sides. So could, could you talk a little bit about your decision to, to join masterminds and, and kind of the benefits yeah. or, or uh, you know, positive sure. and negatives for both of them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, masterminds just in general, as you guys know, I mean, you get one, one of the benefits is you get a, to meet a lot of great people. Um, I mean, we're prime examples of that. I mean, we've kept this relationship open and, and going for a long time now. And, uh, it's fun to watch each other succeed. And it's fun to watch each other go through challenges and learn and it helps us all grow and, and be better. So I think that's number one, that's the biggest part of being a part of a mastermind. Um, and I agree with you, JD on, on the uh, leadership side of it. It's always an interesting dynamic when you have mentors and leaders who are getting paid to do that versus when it's a really a volunteer army. Um, and that's, that's where I'm at in, in the kingdom. Uh, the kingdom real estate of, of being a, a mentor, uh, volunteer, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it brings a, a different level of, um, excitement and a different level of sincerity, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, because you, you have people that are truly there for the benefit of others instead of, Hey, I'm here cause I'm getting paid. Eh, if you succeed, meh, meh, I'm still getting paid. Whereas if it's volunteer army, it's, Hey, I'm literally here because I love you and I want to see you succeed. So that, that's why I like doing it. It's, it's, a, it's a blast, man. It's a blast. Yeah. Do, you so, think, do you think, you know, before you started doing the masterminds to now, have you seen a noticeable difference in, 
in uh, the direction your life's taken or, or the, your business is taken, you know, well, is there? Oh, hands down. Yeah. So yeah, from like the, me- well, both from the member side and from the mentor side, because mm-hmm. I know you did, I just remember you asked me about the member side. When you're, when you're able to be a part of a group like that, where it's really a community coming together, um, or, you know, even if it's just a small group in a room, um, you know, I've done plenty of those and, and you're, you're dedicated to seeing each other succeed and helping each other out, man, it, it changes how you view things. It changes how you approach problems. Um, or I should say it can, if you let it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, it, for me personally in joining masterminds like the kingdom and like other things that I've done more on the local side as well. Um, it, it completely changes how you do business. It changes how you structure your relationships or restructure relationships. It changes how you view yourself. Um, for me, I, I've completely changed how I was living my life based upon before I was going to masterminds. Um, com- completely different than, than what it was a few years ago. So yes, very beneficial both from a personal and a business side of things, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. We're, we're right there too. It's, it's, made a huge uh, positive difference in yeah. our life and, and really just uh, finding like-minded people. We're surrounded by people oh. on a daily basis who are negative or can't see oh. outside of their nine to five job and, and stuff like that. And just uh, being around other like-minded people has elevated our business, our personal life, you know, uh, to a level that we didn't even realize existed oh, yeah. at, at first. But uh, with that said, and I, I'll ask you, uh, I'm not 100% convinced that somebody just starting out or just just starting to learn real estate or business or anything um, should be into, you know, or come into a paid paid mentorship. But I, I was wondering what your thoughts are. Do you think somebody brand new should jump into paid or do you think there's a level where the difference between free education and mentorship and paid education, wh- where does that look like? Or what does it look like to you? Sure. I see what you're saying. So you're, you're talking about if someone's coming in, they want to learn real estate, like where should they start? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I think that's a fantastic question. And I think that that's, as you know, it's pretty highly debated. Mm -hmm. Um, from my personal experience, um, my, for me personally, when I was learning real estate, I jumped into a paid program. I did not know anything um, <laughs> at all. Um, it was just because of a recommendation of a friend. When I and I jumped in, and it ended up being it was the kingdom that I jumped into, and that that ended up being very beneficial for me. But what I came to find um, pretty quickly, um, and really when I look back on it, I look, I'm like, oh man, that was more true than I thought it was. Was it really real estate? There's a lot of places you can learn real estate. There's a lot of ways that you can learn real estate. Um, but the, the issue most people run into has nothing to do with real estate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's really, in my opinion, you're, that's where most people run into. It's, it's not real estate because you can learn that pretty quickly and there's a million different resources on where to learn it. Mm-hmm. It really boils down to the self-confidence, the self-worth, the, the baggage, the generational stuff that's come through, the, the mindset of how people think. Um, that, that's really the the part that that needs to have the most focus in my opinion. So whether it should be paid or free, um, where you should start, you know, if someone was listening to this right now, I'd tell them you need to work on your mindset first and worry about real estate second, because you're not going to do anything in real estate or in business, um, until you've, you've corrected what some of your stuff is, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I definitely understand that. I, I do have a, a little bit of a different opinion. I think yeah. that you're not even going to realize that there's a mindset issue until you have something to base that on. So for me, I, I believe it's, it's if, if real estate is just something that you've never done, you start yeah. learning on the free resources and under, because it's simple, right? It's, it's not easy, but it is simple. It, it's yeah. buy low, sell high. Uh, buy low rent, you know, or sell a contract to somebody else. It's a simple process. Um, yeah. But if you're just living your normal life and working your nine to five and doing the normal things, you don't realize it's like you can't see, see that there's mindset issues. But once you start expanding into these other things, 
and you're limited in your real estate business because of, you know, you, you don't think you're good enough or you don't deserve success or whatever. Uh, then that's where the mindset thing plays into me because I didn't realize that I had any mindset or limiting beliefs or anything like that until I was going in the direction that, that I thought was appropriate. I mean, and I think sometimes yeah. even they come together, you know, like mm -hmm. JD's yeah. mind shift, mind, excuse me, <laughs> um, mind shift change actually came before mine. Mm -hmm. He read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I read it too. And I was just like, oh, okay, you know, cool. <laughs> yeah. I think. Um, and then it wasn't until like three years later where I was ready and my mind set had shifted. And yeah. I was like, wow, I really got it. And I understood yeah. it. I was hungry to learn everything else from then on. Right. Yeah. I think that's a fantastic point because um, I'm, I'm just thinking back to my, on my own experience. And I think that that's totally right um, with, because once you, because then it gives you kind of like a baseline, like then you start experiencing new things like you were saying, JD, because it's going to be very different than like a job, right? right? So you have to kind of have that experience on the, you know, the real estate side or on the business side a little bit before you can start to kind of build a baseline and, oh, this is what I think about this or this is where it's holding me back. So really we're talking about KPIs of the brain, kind of. Exactly, <laughs> KPIs of the brain. Um, That's a good point. That's a very good point. So Luke, you, you have multiple different businesses. You kind of have your, mm -hmm. your hands in a bunch of different things. And, you know, speaking on mindset, I'm wondering, um, how do your other business ventures relate to the real estate uh, ventures? Is the business aspect the same or, uh, you know, your marketing company, can you tell us a little bit about how that works and some of the similarities uh, that you're, you know, uh, Melissa owns different yeah. businesses too. So, so we're trying to yeah. compare some of the differences sure. between businesses as well as some of the similarities. Yeah. Yeah, I know for sure. So the, the, the short answer is, is that they were not similar at all. And I was running myself ragged because I had a different role in every company. Mm -hmm. And that was a totally exhausting. Um, so I've got the real estate investing, marketing company. We have a company that services the trucking industry. Um, and then we, I've had other projects as well, but those are kind of the main, the main ones. And I, I had a different role in every single company. And that was just not, not okay. So I had to learn how to really identify where my strengths were and go, okay, this is where the value that I provide. And this is the value that Luke provides as I rip my hat off here, getting animated. <laughs> but as uh, this is the value that Luke provides. So if Luke's going to be involved, like psh, this is where Luke fits in. This is where Luke fits in. This is where Luke fits in. So we've been transitioning over the last year um, in those companies for the marketing company. It meant that it was just time to pass it off to my business partner. Um, so I'm actually not involved in that business on a day to day on a day to day basis anymore at all, um, because it was okay. Luke is not providing value. If Luke, if this is Luke's role, Luke does not provide value on a day to day basis. Luke is providing value on a quarterly and a, and a semi annual and a annual basis right. on the business on the things. So anyway, so that 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 transition took place. One, it goes to your point that you were talking about, and I, I really like that you made that point on. You need to have that baseline. And I think it goes back to, to that point you just made because I have, obviously I've had a baseline because I've, I've had business for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. I've been in business a lot of years, but you hit different levels where you're like, oh, kind of like I said, the KPIs of the brain, like, huh, that didn't work last year. Let's redo that. Let's try, let's, we need to change that. <laughs> so that, that's where I'm at right now with my businesses is, is transitioning them so that it's, this is where Luke operates in every single business. So does that kind of answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm wondering, because you said you have your um, strengths. How did you identify what your individual strengths are? Because especially when you're first starting out and when you're doing the soul opener thing, uh, yeah. you're, you're running um, all these different hats. You know, I'm the acquisitions guy, the dispositions guy, I'm the marketing guy, all this, until you get wonderful partners that can pull that. How, how did you right. identify what your strengths were? Uh, to kind of limit where your lane was in those businesses. For sure. For sure. And that, that's a good question because it, it, it took a long time to figure that out. The, the biggest thing was I had to be, I had to learn to be honest with myself on what I wasn't good at. Um, and then I had to kind of do, I started by doing the process of elimination. Like, well, I really hate doing this and I really hate doing that. And I know that I suck at this, 
okay, well, let's take those off the table. Now we're, here's the new list. Start breaking that down. Do I, you know, for process of elimination, okay. Once it starts getting smaller, you start going, you know what? Here's these 10 items or five items, whatever it is. I know these two. I don't really like doing these other three though. I actually kind of enjoy. And you just start breaking it down. Like, okay, let's, let's look at these three now. Okay, these three items, which one am I good at? Well, I don't know which one I'm the best at. So I started asking people around me, hey, what do you think I'm the best at? What do you think that I'm really, really good at? Like, what, what, what's natural for me? And start cataloging what their answers were. And I wasn't asking anybody. I was asking, like, people I had done business with, people that were very close to me that knew how I thought. You know, so some family members, I would ask some family members. I wouldn't because I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. That yeah, that's kind of a dangerous one. But right. I have a couple of family members that are, like, very business inclined, and they understand my mind and how I work. And so they can look at it and go, you know what? You're really great at this. You're marginal at this. And I think that you think you're better at this one. That's okay. That's fantastic feedback. Thank you. Um, so going through that, uh, then I would, I took some different like tests, like the, the disc test that Tony Robbins talks mm -hmm. about, um, reading some different books and seeing if I can find where the, the most commonalities are. Okay. Well, from what I'm reading in these different, these books, this test, from what everyone's saying from my own list, it breaks it down to here are the two or three things or one or two things that I know I'm, I'm really good at and that's where I need to stay focused at. And the rest of it needs to be, like you said, I need to find a partner or I need to delegate that out to a VA or, however, or automate it, something. So it's kind of, it's a process. I, I personally think and it, it takes a lot of self-reflection and it takes um, being honest with yourself. Um, and sometimes those conversations are not very fun with yourself in the beginning <laughs> yeah, self-awareness and, and what we found was really cool for us is because we all yeah. were able to do exactly what we love to do so we right. I mean, it fell all in place you know annabelle's a rock yeah. star at marketing jd is the numbers uh you know genius and i just like to like juggle everything and so <laughs> yeah, it kind of right. It worked out. You kind really. of direct the traffic. Yes, 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 exactly. So, I mean, and that's, we're doing all what we love. And so that's, what's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, and it shows in your content. Like, I, you know, obviously I follow you guys on social media and we catch up every once in a while, but like whenever I talk to you guys, whenever I see you on social media, it is very, very consistent with how you are in real life. And it's very consistent across all platforms. Like there's legitimate joy in like all of your content. Mm -hmm. And like that only comes from when you guys are operating in your own lanes. And opinion. our marketing managers are so good at capturing the yes. essence of <laughs> but thank this picture you, not that picture. Thank you. That, that really true. means a lot because that's exactly how we feel. So that is great that that's what we're putting out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And whenever I see your guys' content, I'm like, oh man, they're not having any fun at all. They just, <laughs> yeah. they don't have any fun, no fun whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> I think we need to do an outtakes. That's one of the things we're working yeah. on. All, all of the outtakes, you know, yeah. bad. You know. Hilarious. Yeah. And then another fun. part of it is we really try to be honest. You yeah. know, we, we yes. say it's not all sunshine and rainbows and no. easy every day. Every day being an no. entrepreneur, being a real estate mm -hmm. investor isn't always yeah. easy. In some of the communities that, that we run around in, and obviously none of the communities that I'm a part of and none of the ones that you're a part of, but, but the real estate yeah. community in general, a lot of times yeah. we get a lot of these people who only post the highlights, only post the good stuff. They never talk about, you know, the, the duplex that has been vacant for a year and a half and you can't right. find it. Right. And stuff like that and I think that really does a disservice especially to people who are just getting started because it, they look at it and they see that that it's super easy right well it is super easy but that's because we messed up so many times before one of the things they just po posted in in the kingdom is you know it, it never it never gets easier your first deal is hard to do and then that second deal is hard to do and it's it's less about it becoming easier and it's just that we're becoming yeah. better you know we're, we're becoming right. a level 10 problem solver when right. last year we were a level yeah. nine problem solver and so right. with right. becoming a better problem solver uh our problems get bigger mm -hmm. oh yeah for sure that's a great way to put it. that's that's exactly right it's because it's still problems that need to be solved you just get more confident with with how to solve that level of problem i love that it's 100 percent correct right definitely um, and I guess one of the other things that I wanted to touch on too is uh, one of the other uh, mentorship groups that I'm a part of had this enormous task list 
of everything that happens in a real estate investing business, you know, from acquisitions all the way down to dispositions. And it had the menial task, like picking up checks from title company. It had all these tasks and they said, go through and, and mark which ones you do, mark which ones somebody else on your team does. And you go through and you mark all, all of these things. And then it says, okay, look at the tasks that you've done. Which one of those tasks are employee level tasks, which of them are mid-level manager tasks, and which one of them are business owner tasks. So $12 an hour task versus $20 an hour task versus 50 plus hour yeah. tasks. And if you're trying to scale your business or, or move, you need to move yourself out of those lower level tasks, even if you like doing them and more mm -hmm. into um, you know, the business owner tasks, if you're trying to scale and that's what we're, we are trying to scale our business. Oh, yeah. So even though I like talking on the phone to people all the time, that's probably not the best use of my time. I should probably be networking with other investors or finding private money and those kind of higher level tasks. And sure. um, if you're good at something, but it, it doesn't pay you in the appropriate amount, if you're okay with that, that's perfectly fine. But if you're in a business that's trying to get bigger, you're going to have to realize that some of those tasks you're not going to be able to devote as much time to. And that's more. hard just from a control, um, control yeah. position where, you know, um, nobody can do it as well as you can, but you oh, have yeah. to come to some point where you're letting people fail and teach and that kind of thing. And that's yeah. hard. That's really hard for me. Yeah. Oh, sure. I can see that. It, it, it's definitely a challenge. I, um, it was making me think I just got done reading a book. It's called no plan B for your a game by Bo Eason. Basically the premise of the book is about how to become the best and how to identify what you want to be the best at. Fantastic book. I, I loved it. Um, anyway, he uses an example a couple times about don't be a piano mover. And the context is, is that someone Al Pacino doesn't move pianos, right? He goes and he acts because he's talking about different people in different fields that are the best, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, Al Pacino doesn't move pianos. So kind of like what you're talking about, like, you know, Al Pacino can act, but he also probably can move a piano. Like he probably has that capability. And who knows? Maybe he's a really, really good piano mover, but that's not his main focus. He needs to not move the piano. He's there to act. Like that is his thing that he has to focus on. That he has to delegate the piano moving even even though maybe he loves pianos and he loves to move pianos it was kind of a weird example but it made me think of that I'm like, <laughs> it fits so yeah, yeah, yeah it definitely fits. It, it, it's kind of you know it's kind of a simple the same thing though because it it you know we we like melissa was saying we all run across that where we're like man like i actually kind of enjoy doing this or you know what it's it's okay that i go and i you know i pick up the checks or you know that i talk on the phone maybe i take a little bit extra time though because i love it so much and mm -hmm. i'm really providing an extra level of customer service when i'm on the phone when in reality, you're wasting 15 minutes per phone yeah, call. That's right. Yeah. And now your utilization has dropped and, and you, could, you could have been doing something else. Like right. you could spend those extra 15 minutes were networking with somebody at a networking event and raising hundreds of thousands of dollars or whatever. Yeah. Right. Okay. So yeah. it's tough. It's, it's, it's a tough balance, but it's something that kind of can boil down to what we were talking about with self-awareness and being aware of, hey, I know I'm really good at this. But now I have to have the conversation of, is this worth it from a monetary perspective? Okay, I can go utilize those same communication skills in person or over the phone with somebody who I can raise private money or maybe it's a buyer it's, or you know, somebody at a higher level and I can pass off the seller part of it. Mm -hmm. Like I need to just transition that energy or transition that, that skill and utilize it in a little bit different way. It's I tough. Think that's a really good point and a really great kind of, I think if we can come to a conclusion and get your guys's opinion from the three of you what was a tool i know luke you talked about a book is there anything that's helping you guys kind of make those transitions um and if so what do you think that that thing is so, luke go ahead to make that transition as far you kind of broke up a little bit there just transition as far as like identifying what i need to be doing and, and pushing exactly. off the rest yeah okay yeah um, yeah, that book was, was a great one. Um, having a better CRM. I mean, as, as simple as that sounds with the CRM we were using specifically in the real estate business was too clunky and it required too much of my attention. So I need, so we use REI pro right now. Um, and before we were using Podio and for me that helped because I, I can go, Hey team, here's a 10 minute video on how to use REI pro. I made it one time. Here's the video link. That's how I use REI pro. If you have any additional questions, 
this is where you find like the FAQ page and like all the videos that I've built into it. So then I can onboard a new team member pretty quickly if I need to, then they can go in and they can operate REI Pro within 10 to 15 minutes. Whereas with Podio, it's like, okay, I need to go in. Well, then really you can only have certain access to this. So I need to come and redo this part. And it, and that was just wasting a whole bunch of time. Yeah. So you so optimized helped. and systemized. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Exactly. I love it. Um, so, I mean, that, that was, those were a couple of things um, just with continually reading, continually, continually working on my self-awareness, working on myself, books, audiobooks, things like that some systems have helped and then um, uh, finding good people, you know, and being able to uh, onboard them and going, Hey, this is what the vision is for the company. This is the direction we're heading. Here's, here's the onboarding process. Um, this is what I need you to do. So it takes off my plate so that I can go and do this thing that I've identified as being the number one thing I need to do. Mm-hmm. And, and I think good people is, a, is honestly the biggest thing. And that's where, that's where the, are you finding this good thing works, but where are you finding Good people, and and do you have any extra? <laughs> <laughs> no extra, but if as soon as I do, I'll let you know. <laughs> uh, where do you find good people? So, um, really, it's just is through connections. I mean, you, you, in my opinion, you'll. For, I mean, I've I've had businesses like as an example, I had a home care agency for a while, and when I left that, we had fifty employees. And it, and we had gone through like 350 or something like that in the period that I was there. Anyway, but all those people were found through like job ads and things like that, right? The best people I've ever hired, whether it was that company, the real estate company, uh, other places, the best people have always been come from referrals and from connections of people that I know. Like as an example, one of my, one of my gals on the real estate side, she's been helping me for about a year now. And she has just been a total godsend. She's a single, or she's not single. She's a stay-at-home mom um, who needed a change, has two really young kids. And I went to high school with her, kind of. We were homeschooled, so we kind of went to high school together. <laughs> and we just like reconnect, you know, I, we kind of kept up on Facebook. And then I think I put out there like, hey, I'm looking for somebody. This is the characteristics of the person, not necessarily the job duties. These are the characteristics that I'm looking for. And she's like, well, um, would you talk to me about it? And I'm like, oh, okay, I know you're a good person. Like I've known you for 15 years, even though we haven't been super, super close. Like I know you're a person of high integrity. I know that you, you know, you have great character. I know that you have good customer service because I was able to witness that over a course of a long period. So, and you know, or, you know, in other times it's been like, Hey, I'm looking for this type of person. And someone's like, Hey, my cousin knows this guy who's looking for something. And apparently he meets that criteria. Okay. Well, let's have coffee. Yeah. So, yeah. That's maybe not the answer you're looking for, but that's, that's how I found my no, that's exactly that's exactly what we were right. talking about earlier about, um, yeah. maybe we could find more people through, through yeah. Yeah. and networking. Yeah. Yeah. Networking yeah. Is the it's tough. Is it's tough though, because really it's focusing on what I, I found. It's not focusing on necessarily the job. It's focusing on those traits that really can't be taught, you know, like integrity, uh, you know, responsibility, you know, things like that. Um, because you can teach how to use a CRM, you can teach how to talk on the phone, you can teach how to even sell, but you can't teach those like core principles. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so looking for people that meet that instead of like a job description, once I made that transition, it, it made, it made it a lot, it made, it was still frustrating, but I wasn't at least sifting through, you know, like dozens and dozens of resumes. Mm-hmm. It was like, here's three people. Okay, within five minutes of talking to them, I can tell if they meet the, if they meet most of my criteria. Yeah. Or not. Right. Good. And that's really like the perfect segue to our tool. And I think what we found the most beneficial is about six yeah. months ago, JD read Traction, and then he said, "Everybody, read this book right now. <laughs> this is what is going to simplify everything for yeah. us." And it really has. I think I just got that book in. I think it. I, yeah, I did. And so it's on my reading list. I'm glad I've, I've heard that it's good. Really so good. thank you. I just confirms that that's probably gonna be one of my next reads. The the first time I I got it, I just got it an audio book and I listened to oh, yeah. to it on on drives. Uh, but as soon as I was done, or actually before I was done, I went to Amazon and and uh, bought the hard copy because I wanted to be able to right. take notes in it. It provided so much value, and I'd heard about it before and looked at it before, but I wasn't really yeah. into it. And I think uh, what's so funny is. 
how different books and different pieces of information resonate with me different based off of where our business is at, at the yeah. current level. You know, when, when you are just learning how to do your first wholesale deal, well, traction is probably not the book for you. It doesn't mean anything, but once you're trying to build the right. team and set up systems and processes, like that is the book that everybody should be reading. Right. Well, Luke, we know well, we want to I, I just had a similar thing with, um, Oh, what book was it? It was um, Third Circle Theory. Oh, yeah. I tried reading that um, when I first started with in when I was first looking at getting into real estate. And I was so not ready for that book. And I literally went through it. And I'm like, I have no idea what I just read. <laughs> <laughs> and then like now I just started reading again. I'm like, this is good shit. <laughs> this is really yeah. good. This is really good. I, I had to, I had a little bit of the same ex experience with third circle theory. It was a little uh, out there in the ether and not as, yeah. as real and concrete. I mean, they're hard concepts or they're big concepts, right? Um, but yeah. as soon yeah. as you are ready to learn that kind of stuff, what do they say? Uh, the teacher appears when the student is ready kind of thing. Yep. And, and oh, that's totally. exactly, that book is a perfect example of that as well. Exactly. I had the same experience. Yeah. Cause then you can kind of go, th you can go through and go like, wow, this is like really out there. Like this probably doesn't align with like my belief system or whatever, but like, it's really interesting to read about nonetheless. Mm -hmm. And then the, you know, the other parts of the book are like, Oh, well I actually, I can totally relate and see how this applies to life. Like I agree with that. And you can pick and choose what really yep. applies Pick and choose maybe isn't the right way to put it, but you know what I mean. Yeah. You can kind of go through it and go, what if, this is what applies to me right now. All right, yeah. So, anyway. Well, guys, I think, you know, we want to be respectful of your time. I know we've given our listeners a list of three books now to add to their <laughs> reading list, but a ton of good tips. Um, so, Luke, we're so grateful for your time. We really appreciate Absolutely. it, and thanks for being a guest. Thanks, Luke. Thank you, Luke. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Love you guys, and uh, so excited to see you guys continue to grow. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Jam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. For more information and updates, check out our website, ShorefrontRestorations.com, or find us on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn at Shorefront Restorations. If you have any questions, feel free to drop us an email at info at ShorefrontRestorations.com. See you next episode.